office before you leave? Well, the split goes back a few years because it was a law passed by the legislature. And as I understand it, at the urging of a lot of people who lived on the east side of both Granite and Jordan districts. So they're, you know, both districts were on the verge of, of a split when the law was written, kind of tailored to the people who wanted it to happen. Um, as I understand it, there were a lot of parents on the east side who were upset that schools were not being renovated and they were building schools to uh, kind of take the influx of burgeoning enrollment on the west side because Harriman blossomed. I mean, it became a city just huge. They couldn't build the schools fast enough. I think there are people who were in charge of the money, who knew the split was coming, and maybe anticipated either the public outcry and let the deficit happen. I'd say they need to come and sit in our classrooms. They need to know on a day-to-day -day basis what we do, how we do it, and who we do it for. Because I think that message is theory for them. They were in school. They don't come unless it's an event. They, they go see some football games. They'll go and see a play. They will go and see a performance at an elementary school, but they don't come and sit in our classrooms and even know what it's like to pass in a hallway of crowded students. So the cities of Midvale, Sandy, Cottonwood Heights, Analta, and Draper got together and they decided to have hold a vote to, to divide the original Jordan School District. Um, that vote passed with a small margin and it, and it created the new Canyon School District. Our projections show that it will take about 12 years, so one cycle of, uh, of children and uh, we should be back to our pre-split funding levels. That's when the, the businesses and uh, the growth in our district have caught up with the, with the education funding that we need and we'll be back to pre-split levels. Jordan School District, as it is now, received 60% of the children and only 40% of the funds of the original district. And so we knew we'd already have less funding, and so we tried to make steps in downsizing to prepare for that. In addition, the, the actual costs of the district split were, were upwards of $33 million. Of that, it, it affected us to the tune of about uh, 8 to $10 million in our general fund. The board has had its primary focus on protecting the classroom. And so we've tried not to impact uh, or let the split impact the teachers at all or as little as possible. We haven't raised class sizes, which was one of the proposals they had looked at early. And so most of the people that have taken the, the hit on the, on the budget deficit have been our non-teaching employees. We've laid off uh, about 190 this year and we laid off 200 last year, so about 390 in total to, uh, to make up some, most of this budget deficit to where we can, we can pay our bills. Budget certainly is part of my job. Um, you get told how much money you can spend. And as far as my job, it has affected the people that I work with more than me. Uh, in 2006, uh, we lost half of our faculty at Valley High School, 14 teachers. We only had 22. Um, and so I lost a real lot of really good people who were forced into retirement, didn't want to retire and replace. So it's been in a state of flux. That's four years ago and we've still, in my opinion, haven't recovered. So I think the day-to-day, -day, what students are actually going to learn and use in their lives gets folded away, put away, so that schools can show on paper we're succeeding rather than showing, hey, Look at the student who graduated from the school. Look what they're go going to do. Look at the colleges they're going to. So I think the individuals get washed out in the numbers of, uh, it's called adequate yearly progress that each school has to make. And if you don't make it first year, there are reper repercussions. And then after three years, they can come in and, and fire the whole staff. I know there are hard feelings in the split. And we, want to just move beyond that and we're so grateful that there's e equity now in both sides in terms of assessed valuation that was always such a big sticking point and now they're equal and I hope that we can all move on and get down to the education of children that's our business that's our business in public ed regardless of where we are
the biggest and the most publicized expectation was to address the aging buildings. When you've got kids who um, are sitting in a, in a classroom where you can't wire it, where um, the principal has to go down every single day to a boiler that hasn't been upgraded in 50, 60 years and pound on the pipes with a wrench to get it to work so kids aren't freezing to death in the, in the winter, people wanted that addressed. And I think that a lot of the voters, before the um, vote to create Canyon School District took place, were saying, we would like our buildings addressed, or can we try this innovation, or can we do these other things? They didn't feel as if they could make a difference when the district was so large. And we take that very seriously. So that's why we do the things I was talking about earlier. We go to communities and say, what do you want in a new leader? And it's worked great. The past four or five new principals we've hired, it's a perfect fit. They have fit so well in there because every community is different. We recognize that. Is it more work? Oh, yeah, it's a lot more work. Is it worth it? Hands down, 100% worth every minute spent. I think there's going to be a real lull time for about four years as the West Side plays catch up. I saw this district-wide in the late 80s where things like paper rationing, uh, field trips, a lot of those things that can make the day-to-day -day life of school more enriching for students will be gone. The money went down across the board. We had to cut 13 million from our budget too. So everybody in public ed is feeling the crunch of the economy. And to have, but to have the assessed valuation come up, to have 15 million in new growth, which you capture under the law, you don't have to go through hearings or anything to capture that. The Jordan District was able to capture that money. It's evening out. We, we want that story to be told. you